It affects the ocean. It affects freshwater tanks. It affects saltwater tanks. It affects your tank. Hey guys, I'm Devin with Reef Dudes, and today we're going to be talking about the nitrogen cycle. Now, every tank goes through what's called the nitrogen cycle. As your bacteria colonies build up, it's going to process ammonia, nitrates, and nitrates, and keep your tank healthy. If you just put a fish into a brand new tank, it is extremely dangerous. It's going to harm them. Uh, ammonia is a very toxic chemical, and it will burn the gills and potentially stress or kill your fish. It's a very cruel thing to do. So you really need to make sure you properly cycle your tank. Very, very important. Now, corals, on the other hand, they can handle a small bit of ammonia, but fish, not so much. So how does this work exactly? Well, it starts out with ammonia. Ammonia, or NH3, enters your aquarium through a couple different areas. Uh, the one of the main ones is either the fish, the food you feed your fish, or fish or invert waste in your tank. That waste will break down and turn into ammonia. Now, ammonia will be consumed by a bacteria that will grow called nitrosumasis. And what that does will turn ammonia into nitrites. So we get rid of one toxic chemical and now we have another toxic chemical to deal with. Uh, now there's another bacteria population which is called, I believe it's called nitrospira, which will help convert nitrates into nitrates. So NO2 into NO3. Essentially the whole nitrogen cycle is really just building up these beneficial bacteria inside of your tank. Look at the process again. You have fish in your tank. If a fish dies or if it poops, you feed it and food breaks down it in your tank it turns into ammonia now the bacteria is going to consume that ammonia turn it into nitrites and then another bacteria is going to turn into nitrates so how do you get rid of nitrates from your tank there's a couple ways the one obvious quick solution is due to a water change which will reduce it another couple ways to do it is with the use of an algae so if you think of nitrate it's basically like a fertilizer for algae if your nitrates are too high in your tank, you're gonna have algae. So it's one reason you wanna get rid of it. In a saltwater tank, you can use macroalgae like Chetomorpha or Calerpa or an algae scrubber. In a freshwater tank, you could use plants which would absorb the harmful nitrates. There's also things like cleanup crew, like copepods and those type of critters which will eat the algae in your tank. And now those little copepods are eaten by fish and other stuff, and then the other fish and stuff could be eaten by bigger fish, and that's kind of how the circle of the cycle continues over and over again. That's kind of the basis on what you need to know about it. Now, when you're starting a new tank, you're going to start out, you're going to have a spike of ammonia, and then it's going to taper down. Next, your nitrates is going to come about partway through the ammonia cycle, and that will start to taper down. And then as your nitrates come up, they'll start to consume the nitrites, and your nitrates will grow until you do a water change, and it can bring it down, spike it up, or your macroalgae is consuming. Now, ideally, you want to have less than 10 nitrates is kind of considered a general acceptable thing. In my tank, I'm probably 15 to 20. There's no allergy issues. There's no big deal. So it's not a critical thing. And that nitrates is definitely the least toxic, the least invasive in the tank. However, elevated levels will cause extra algae or it can potentially harm your corals. Now, when you get a little more advanced, there's a few other things you can do to help control nitrates. Uh, one of them is called carbon dosing, which is addition of a carbon, liquid carbon source such as vodka or vinegar, two common ones. I've also heard people using sugars. And what those sugars or this carbon source will do is it will feed the bacteria, the denitrifying bacteria. So as that bacteria grows, it's going to consume more of the nitrates and help you retain. But that's a very kind of advanced topic, which we'll get to in a future video. It's not something you want to jump into as there is some risks involved as well. Aside from the big three, there's another one called phosphates. Now, phosphates in high levels can be harmful to corals. So most reef tanks, they want to keep it less than 0.3. Now, how do we control phosphates? Now, phosphates is another one. That can be controlled through the use of chemical media such as GFO, granuloic oxide, or it can do it natural ways, which is by using chetomorpha or in a freshwater tank plants, and they'll consume up those phosphates which will keep them at a, your nitrates, your phosphates at a low level, will keep your corals and your fish happy. So you're setting up a new tank, but you don't want to wait weeks and weeks and weeks for the cycle to go through its course. What do you do? All right, so a few different things. If you're starting with live rock or live sand, that's going to speed it up immensely because you already have, you're introducing a colony of bacteria that will help spread throughout your tank. Now, the bigger trend these days, at least in salt waters, for people to use dry rock. 
And the main reason for this is you don't have any pests on the rock. It's going to make your life easier but down the road of potential things and bugs or like an enemy, not an enemy, um, Aptasia or different things spreading in your tank. So dry rock has nothing bad in it, but you have no bacteria source. So you can do it the slow way by adding fish food to your tank or like, you know, if you're probably using rotten shrimp, those type of things, kind of nasty, people do it. But for me personally, there's a lot of new products on the market called like, there's like Biospira, Dr. Tim's, a ton of these different products. And what you're doing is introducing these bacteria into the tank. So you're giving a source to start with right off the bat. So they'll take your cycle from weeks and weeks down to a few days. So it's an easy way to add a couple of fish and a few things in their hurt. If you're starting a new tank, make sure your tank is fully cycled before you add anything alive. When your cycle's almost done, you can start to add some coral, but do not add live fish until your tank is fully cycled. And if you do, make sure you're using denitrifying bacteria. If your friends are starting a new tank, make sure you send a link to this video and make sure they fully understand this because it's very important stuff. And now, if you guys have any specific questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them as quickly as possible. And if you have a new question, you want to ask something or learn something new from Reef Dudes, there's a link below I'm going to put to reefdudes.com slash ask where you can submit any question you want and I will see if I can make a video on it to hopefully help you guys out some more. So if you enjoy this, please hit that like button. Otherwise, subscribe to stay up to date on more videos from Reef Dudes.